in a cart with a bench seat all by yourself, the middle is the best position to be in because it gives you even access to either side of your body. All right, so this harness has what's called, a, or lines have what's called a pinky loop on it. Um, I've grown to appreciate a cheap little hair tie one instead of a biothane one. Um, biothane is good sturdy stuff and if something were to happen I don't necessarily want my pinky getting stuck in it. Whereas with a hair tie, the hair tie is going to break before my pinky does, hopefully. Whereas this, maybe not. But that's okay. I use I haven't had the heart to cut it off yet, so. But what the pinky loop does is it makes sure that, you know, you don't have to have the buckle sitting here in your hand as you're holding the reins or the whip. It lets you have a little bit more freedom of your hand, so it's easier to adjust things. So there's a couple different grips you can do with your lines. The one that most people that come from riding is probably familiar with would be what I, I call this the overhand grip because the slack in the rain goes over your hand. So you have the line in there. It comes between your pinky and ring finger and goes to her. And then it goes over the top and your thumb is your grip. This is a good grip, especially if you're needing to keep a real hold of the lines because there's two bends in it and therefore there's more friction and traction and you don't have to squeeze as hard to keep the lines from sliding. So if I were really driving two-handed most of the time, I would have my slack in my left hand and my whip in your, my right. That way I only have two things in each hand. If I'm driving one-handed, I put my slack in my whip in my right hand and then the reins are in my left. So that's the overhand position. When you go to adjust your range, you pinch and slide, pinch and slide. And then of course you see the, the bow of the reins kind of goes down and in between. The next grip is what I like to term the overhand grip, or underhand. Maybe I've got those reversed. Over the hand, under the hand, okay. So overhand grip, reins go over your hand. Underhand grip, rein goes under your hand and out the top. Okay, so overhand grip. Here I've got the lines just laying over my pointer fingers. I'll often actually have them in between here. This is mostly because I swap back and forth between two, single and two-handed. But you can have them over here. So your, your grip is basically just your thumb and forefinger there. Your other fingers kind of help reinforce. But there's not, there's not a whole lot of strength in this grip. Um, it's great for long lining because it allows you to slide them in and out really easily. So when I go to adjust these lines, I'll grab underneath and slide up. I may even grab both of them and then stick a finger between there and slide them up that way. If I put it between my middle finger and my pointer finger, I've got them that way and you know, same deal, pinch and slide. It makes it a little easier to grab here and then slide both of them up because then that just lays over the top and then you're not interfering with yourself. So overhand grips, you can have your rein just over the top. You can have it in between your forefinger and your middle finger. So underhand grip. Typically you do it between your pinky and ring finger. That also helps separate out the whip. So the whip goes all the way through and then the rein goes between your pinky and ring finger. You can go all the way down, but you see how that kind of interferes with both the whip and the, and the pinky loop. Let me switch to overhand. So driving with two hands, you'll notice it, it takes a little bit of a skill to be able to use your whip and the reins at the same time. So if I bring her around G, I've got to be able to hold that right rein as I engage the whip on the left hand side of her. Same thing here with stepping her haw. There we go. Good girl. A little more. Good girl. 
I got to be able to use the whip without disturbing her face. If I want her to step out on the turn, there's a good girl, excuse me, I got to be able to hold that outside rein and engage her inside whip aids at the same time. Good girl. Now I do believe it's a valuable skill to be able to have two hands and use the whip at the same time. I teach my students that way to use two hands first because it makes one hand it easier. <laughs> and there are times when you just want to have one hand on each side of the reins. Especially if you're in a moment that you need to fix things now and you need to be quick and effective. So single-handed grips, they vary, and I admit I need to brush up on what all they're called. There's the coachman's grip, Achenbach, and I think there's two or three others. Achenbach actually insists on a different type of lines, but anyways. So one, they're, they're almost all overhand grips with the reins coming through the top of your hand. You can do an underhand grip, but for me it's really awkward and it's not as easy to adjust or to communicate with the horse personally. So here I've got kind of my baseline position. I've got my reins lines between my pointer and my middle finger. I've got my whip all the way through and I've got my pinky loop. So if I'm going to swap to one-handed, I'm just simply going to lay that over there. So see that again? I've got it one in each hand. If I'm going to swap to one hand, I'm just going to lay that over. So here I have the lines in between or around my index finger. And this works pretty good for me. And since now I'm one-handed, I'm going to swap my pinky loop. And this works pretty well for me. And I like it this way. Partially, I, I started out riding Western, and I would hold my reins this way. So it feels a little bit more natural to me. Some, some say you should have two fingers in between there, like so. Um, the feel of my pointer and index finger rubbing together feels just a little odd to me. It does give you a little bit more separation, so you can kind of grip with both fingers at the same time. But it does feel awkward to me personally. I just need to use it more, I guess. And the other thing I'll do, so here I've got the lines going straight through. When I have them around one finger, I'll often put my, my left line in between my pinky and index, or ring finger. That way when I go to grab to adjust my lines, they're a little bit more separated versus right on top of each other and I'm having to split them. So that's kind of why I like this grip a little bit better. So this allows me a lot more freedom of my whip. which means less confusion for her. And the whip, the whip basically replaces your leg if you're a rider. It allows you to move her body parts around. The basics of the basics is your, your lines mean stop and your whip means go. Not that I sit here and ha, ah, pop her with it, but it tells her feet where to go. The lines make, basically just point her nose and it's the leg, the whip that actually gets her going there. Good girl. So I can actually maintain, she's not as good at this, but I can maintain that right bend and I can actually push her out to the left a little bit. Yeah, you got it. There we go. Good girl. And you see how I move my hand a little bit? Ideally, you've got the lines adjusted as such that you don't have to move your hand a whole lot. But if I move my hand to the left, that's going to take up Sipsy on the right rein. Just as if I move my hand to the right, that's going to take up on the left rein. Ideally, you should adjust in here and be able to kind of squeeze either way, but that's for demonstration purposes. And if you're doing something and you, can't, and you need to be actively using your whip and you can't quite adjust your reins for half a second, you can move your hand over just for a little bit. So that's the overhand rein grip. You could do 
underhand like this with it coming between the around the ring finger basically. Um, and this isn't something I've really done a lot of driving in, mostly because I hate it. <laughs> As you can see, I've got both reins coming out the top of my hand. Um, it can provide a decent grip, but there's no separation. I guess I could do it that way, but then I've got just my right rein around my middle finger. MG. Good girl. not a grip I would recommend. I mean, if it works for you and it's good in your hand, great, fantastic, use what works. But for me personally, this is not a efficient or effective grip for me. Especially since, especially this left rein, as I'm trying to let it slide, it gets a little hung up on the other one. And because of the bend that is created in my hand, it also makes it a little harder for it to slide. As I said, with the two-handed underhand grip. That's a stronger, more grippy grip, and it has more friction to it, so it's harder to adjust. So the next grip, we'll start back to our underhand, two-hand grip. This would be typically the base position, and then what you would do is you would actually just lay this one over the top. So you've got the lines coming out of either side of your hand. I used to use this one a lot until I started getting some hand fatigue issues and then I'd swap back and forth. I still use this one a lot when I'm ground driving because it gives you a little bit of space there and all you gotta do is kinda move your wrist back and forth to affect each side of her face. And this one can actually have two different starting points. One would be a complete overhand grip, and then you just lay it over there. Underhand. Ah, I'm getting my terms confused. So underhand grip, and you just lay it across. Or you'd have your left hand underhand and your right hand over the hand. And then when you go to do single, you just lay it over that way. And that's actually just a little little bit easier transition so you're not having to open up your hand as much. Come hot dolly. And this one also makes adjustments fairly easy. It's a little bit grippier than the straight overhand grip because you've got a bend here and a bend here as the lines come through. And you can also put that thumb on both lines. But the advantage it has over the completely underhand one is that I've got separation of my tail ends of the line and it makes it easy to pick which one to adjust. So I'll talk a little bit about the whip here. We've discussed line handing. I know another thing I, I sometimes do is I'll put a little separation there instead of having it go all the way through. It, it just depends on the moment. So your whip replaces your leg. Your whip tells the horse where to go. The lines are going to aim her nose and ask for flexibility in her jaw and hold, whereas the whip actually moves the feet. Your reins really, they, they retard the motion of the horse's body. You know, if I just ask her to spin through here with just my lines, she's going to get slower and slower. I can use my voice a little bit to encourage her, but she's not going to move out as freely because the only thing I can do is retard her motion with the reins, lines. Come hot, Dolly. There's a good girl. And she's doing a decent jo job of just coming off my lines here. But you notice, if you watch her hips, see how much she's rubbing against that shaft? Ideally, in a good pivoting turn, she should stay mostly in the middle. Good girl. and not be rubbing her hip against that shaft so much. So the difference I can make with the whip, one, I can prepare her a little bit through the turn and be sure she's carrying that shoulder through and not just diving in. But two, once we get past this little section here, I can use the whip to be sure that her shoulders are keeping up with her butt and make for a smoother, more consistent, more forward turn. So we're gonna turn her right after 
this fence block here. Adjust my lines a little bit. So it comes G. She's still leaning on the shaft just a little bit. There we go. Come G. There we go. Good girl. So what I use, excuse me, for is to get her, push her shoulders out. So I'm holding my right one, playing with my left one. Excuse me. There we go. Good girl. Excuse me. Yeah. There we go. Good girl. Excuse me. Yeah, I know. It's hard. There we go. Good girl. So typically when I'm using my whip, you're... The shaft part of your whip should be long enough to be in front of the hip strap. It shouldn't be so long that it's running into the saddle, because if it's that long, you're, you're too long and it's not going to help you very much. Because your, your go section is in here, in between the lines, in between the saddle and the hip, hip strap. That's your go button. You can also alternate on the hips to step her up timing it for her to step forward, but for the most part I use in between the saddle and hip strap and in between my lines. So when we're moving her body parts, when I'm asking the hips to step over, I'll often touch her with the shaft of the whip, asking that hip to step over, good girl. Let's move the hip back that way a little bit. It should get, should get, oh, there we go, good girl closer to the other shaft. So I'll use the shaft of the whip to move the hips. If I use the lash, you notice how I this one's got a decent length lash on it. I have to hold it back here in order to reach, and I'm not actually touching her right now. I'm just kind of demonstrating. But it's a lot easier to just use the shaft to touch at this point rather than trying to reach back and touch, tag her with the tip of the lash. The shoulders, obviously, you, you can reach up here and touch her with the tip of the shaft, but what's a little bit more effective and efficient is reaching up with the lash of the whip. And that's really what it's designed for, is to reach up and touch her with the tip of it in order to communicate what you want. And I can use this whip both to drive her forward, to ask her to move laterally, and to ask her to just kind of bend a little bit more. You know, if she's a little stiff in her body, I may touch her more on the barrel to shift the barrel to the outside and encourage her to bend around through the turn.